We've just ripped the 800-foot rubber skirt off the Princess Margaret hovercraft. But that was only part of the system that allowed this thing to hover. It's day two. Time to take a look at the fans. Just how big did they need to be to lift this beast into the air? There are four fans, but getting to them is tricky. We have to cut through the side of the hovercraft and don't want to damage the interior before we've had a chance to salvage the seats. Hovercraft have kind of a cult following around here, and these seats could actually sell to collectors at auction. Roy has a special machine for this job. It's a set of hydraulic jaws with a surprisingly delicate bite. I mean, it's amazing how accurate he can be with such a huge machine. Good job, Roy. Yeah. It's great. It's amazing to have this kind of a view on a giant machine like this. Now I can climb right into the guts of this huge hovercraft. I bet I could crawl into the blades and get a closer look. This is not where you'd want to be when the engines start. I'd be sliced and diced. Oh, wow. This is a big inlet. I'm in a giant fan. It's mounted not vertically, but horizontally. It sucks in thousands of tons of air through this giant inlet and forces it down through the skirt and into the plenum chamber below. This is what made the hovercraft hover. Each of the four fans is 12 feet wide and could spin at over 400 miles an hour. That was fast enough to fill the enormous skirt in just six seconds and create the air cushion that made the 300-ton Princess Margaret hover. It solved the very problem that had driven Cockerell to invent the hovercraft. The Margaret didn't have to drag its bulk through the water. Instead, it could fly over the top, creating almost no surface friction.